Hey all and welcome back for another round of Hellfire Comms Patreon TV Comms. Today we're returning to Mike Tyson's Mysteries for a couple of episodes from Season 4. And these are A Mystery in Little Italy and Pilot Error. Once again, commissioned by Mauricio Cuervo. So uh, we're just going to get right on into it, starting with Mystery in Little Italy. Here we go. In 3, 2, 1... Uh, this is just the kind of thing I needed today. I'm a little bit run down, so uh, some absurdist comedy is the best remedy for such uh, tiredness. Yeah, I've never heard of this. Really? Have we not watched some of this before? Oh, that must have been me and Vogue. Yeah. Pigeon. I'm, I'm happy Pigeon's a character. <laughs> it's basically uh, Scooby-Doo in all but name. Oh, okay. So, so that yeah, all right. I'm seeing that this is like when I saw the title, like my thought was like, oh, is this gonna be like one of those old eighty weird eighties things? But okay, no, it's modern and self aware. Gotcha. That's how he's always introduced. Yeah. In fact, he uh, destroys people who do not give him <laughs> the proper respect. Yeah. A little bit of an Iron Chef motif for this episode. Yeah, because I won't lie, when I first saw this, <coughs> uh, like that we were doing, like first, like the first thing that popped into my head was like, "Oh, this is going to be kind of like this is going to be like the MC Hammer show <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> from the nineties, <laughs> or but, maybe like the Mister T show." Yeah. Ah, I see. Definitely not yeah. siphoning money for myself, no. Even fucking Remy Ratatouille himself could not come up with a meal using such ingredients. Mm. So just to give you a quick rundown as I can see, uh, Mike and his team basically go about solving mysteries and uh, getting into wacky hijinks. That's basically the show. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, it happens. That's a good I- face tattoo. And they, they've really they, they they nailed it. Mm-hmm. So far, well, I'm not this... seeing the whole mystery aspect of this episode. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, he's an interesting guy, is Mike Tyson. Interesting is the word I'd use. Uh, he he, you know, it's nice that he chilled out. Uh, following uh oh. his professional career. Uh, boxing does shit to you. Mm. <laughs> that's that's an issue. <laughs> I've seen uh Apple two of Master Chef in my time. Yeah. This is exactly how it's framed in that shit as well. I've seen a bit of sweet genius. So can I just assume that this is an adult swim venture? I would assume so, yeah. Yeah. It is nice that Mike Tyson is, like, 
gotten to the point where he's just you know, willing to do this. Yeah. I think yeah. it speaks well of him, like, just poking fun at stuff. Yeah, because it's like, he, he he did some, you know, he, he, he did a lot of weird, uh, controversial, to say uh, the least, uh, <sighs> shit yes. back in his heyday. Yes, but, like, <laughs> you know, it's like, a lot of that is the lifestyle of mm-hmm. professional combat sports. Uh, but, uh, he, 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 he has significantly mellowed out. I really like mm. the uh, video of him playing Punch Out for the first time. Oh, yeah, that's cool. All right, so we have uh, Mike voiced by himself, obviously. Uh, Pigeon is voiced by Norm MacDonald. Uh, Young He Tyson, who is Tyson's adoptive daughter, voiced by Rachel Ramrus. And the Marquess of Queensberry, who is a ghost, voiced by Jim Rush. Don't ask, he's just a ghost. Yeah. Mike Tyson can't come up with $10,000, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. That's like, what, two, maybe three adverts worth of appearances for him? Uh, uh, I think that's less than one advert. <laughs> Jeez. I, that's like, I, he's still a big name. Oh, man. I've heard him say worse things. Mm-hmm. Oh, much worse. Uh, yeah. I th- Literally, I th- like his fucking most famous quote is filled with expletives. And a slur. Yes. Maybe one or two. <laughs> no, it's oh, just one. At, look at this fancy animation here. Yeah. Uh, traveling shot. Okay, now it kind of feels like padding. (laughs) Now it's a little bit insulting. (laughs) (laughs) My god. Did we just witness a murder? Uh, Self-defense. He pulled the gun first. (laughs) He pulled an exterminator's device, yes. Yes. You know, I've genuinely, I've never seen a non-stereotyped Italian in, in pop culture. Yeah. Like, all of them. It, it's actually, it, it's, it's actually kind of amazing. Like, them and Italians, sorry, them and the Irish are probably the most acceptable targets in pop culture. I mean, yeah, but like, I've seen Irish characters who's like who aren't in some way played up as Irish characters. Every Italian character I can think of is in some way playing to some kind of stereotype, either criminal or like flamboyant or aggressive. Just a random pizza place <laughs> run yeah. by an Asian. Yeah. You know, like, even in, like, superhero shit, like, the most famous Italian-American superhero is the Punisher. And does mm. that not tell you all you need to know? <laughs> this is how irrelevant this part of the episode is. It's not even included in the synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Detroit line. I get the impression that Mike never does a second take in the voice booth. Yeah. That, that's it. That's all I can do today. That's all you need from him. They almost <laughs> all became ghosts there. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Just ends. Yeah. I mean, that's an adult swim show for you. Yep, uh, we we learned that with Stroke Run Hoop, really. Uh, so yeah, that was Mystery in Little Italy, and now we have Pilot Arrow. Ready when you are, mate. Gotta open, and there we are. Okay, yes. Alright, in three, two, one. Your first taste of Mike Tyson's mysteries was uh, a little bit... Uh, Wacky, shall we say. This one might have more of a standard mystery to solve. Yeah, I'm sure this will be... Yeah, I'm hoping that was just a one-off and this show is like the grounded masterpiece I've heard it was. <laughs> Can you imagine just for one episode out of four seasons? <laughs> Alright, there we go. So it is clearly like parodying the uh, like... Mr. T, MC Hammer cartoon yeah. stuff like that that I met that I thought this was. You would be arrested several times over. Hmm. What's the rush, Mr. Pilot? <laughs> That's intimidating. Nothing funnier than uh, a foul mouth pigeon. Nothing. Yeah. Especially if they're voice by Norm MacDonald. Oh, yes. Uh oh. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> clues. Dick clues. Ah, uh, he's flamboyant. <laughs> Look at Mike's fucking face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this really a mystery? 
anything can be a mystery if there's a problem to solve. <laughs> Just treating mysteries like the Riddler treats riddles. <laughs> Good job. And also drink. You just salt his own hand? Have someone else make the phone call for you. <laughs> this phone has caused enough trouble already. Anymore. <laughs> oh. Can ghosts get drunk? Uh, I'm sure they can. Hmm. This is a very Aqua Teen Hunger Force plot, which is, a, like, you have, like, a, a character show up who's normal, and then they get ru- their life gets ruined. Like, that's Go away, the- you freak. I'm so tired of this. <laughs> Poor Nancy. Well, that took care of that problem, I guess. There you go. Psychic damage. It works. Just a real mystery yeah. unfolding while the others dick about in, like, an airport cafeteria. <laughs> Well, shit. Well, that's good eating. Oh, Nana's uh, packing. <laughs> oh, he's stuck with the bill. He wouldn't want to be reminded of his job. Yeah. Well, I mean... Her dad's dead. (laughs) Eyes on the road, Mike. It's okay, it's the longest road in America. Yeah.
There's nothing he can say that isn't funny. Norm Macdonald. Yeah. He, he, he is one of those guys you can read the phone book and it'll be funny. Well, I mean, he's known for, like, his shock humor, but I grew up hearing his voice in cartoons a lot. Yeah. I, he's just got he's just got a great voice for, like, That's pretty much delivery, anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I always grew up, uh, when, like, hearing, like, watching him uh, as a kid was always on, like, late night TV. Mm-hmm. For me, he was kind of like an asshole genie in the Fairly Odd Parents. Oh. Oh, yeah, he was him. Oh, God. Whoops. This mystery has so many angles and dimensions. (laughs) Thank you, Mike. Delivery's on point. Well, that's that mystery solved, I guess. (laughs) He's been checked out the whole time. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, I guess that just ends. Is there anything else? Oh, it's a live-action mic. Oh, is there a live-action mic at the end? Oh, boy. Oh, and the... uh... The father was alive. I'll be. Oh, he's, he's taken his. Uh, I think that's this actual video of him learning how to take a uh, how to how to prepare for an emergency. So it turns out the pilot and the father-in-law were dating. The end. All right. I mean, I was just watching it through because I didn't want to be spoiled. Well, I'm sorry, but here we are. That's just how Mike Tyson mysteries works, I guess. That's just Mike Tyson for you. <sighs> Indeed. So yeah, that was a couple of episodes of the fourth season of Mike Tyson mysteries. I'm not actually sure if we have any more on the docket, so uh, let me have a look here. Uh, no, that seems to be the last episodes for a while, so uh, thank you, Marcia Cuervo, for uh, commissioning these. If you guys want your own TV comms, hit up patreon.com forward slash hellfire comms, and uh, we can get a little something going. You can even have a movie com if you go to the right tier. But please be aware, there is currently a backlog. We're working through it as fast as we can. If you commission something this year, you'll probably get it next year. But uh, you do not have to stay commissioned once the uh, first payment has gone through. It's just, you know, the initial one that matters most. Every penny helps to support the group. Thank you for your support and patience thus far. See you next time for another batch of TV comms. Bye-bye.